Hello and welcome to our daily Godcast of evening prayer. Either it's Ash Wednesday or I've been down playing in the coal bin. But uh, I do believe it's Ash Wednesday. And uh, welcome to our... Was it my doctor's? And I have to lay on a table. I tuck that in. I put it back out. Anyway, uh, today we begin our Lenten observances, our our pathway towards the Triduum and celebrating the passion, death, and resurrection of our Lord Jesus Christ. And we embark on this Lenten journey today on Ash Wednesday. Our readings, and they're always, every year they're the same readings. It's not like it changes from cycle to cycle. The Lenten readings are stable. They're set in stone. It's what we hear every year, and it's a good thing because this is, this is a season of re-energizing, reinvigorating, recommitting ourselves to our faith walk. And we hear in our readings today reminders of what we are supposed to do, um, proclaiming a fast from our first reading, the prophet Joel pro- Pro- proclaiming a fast. Now, we hear that in the Old Testament too in the story of uh, Jonah. Remember when Jonah, after he finally made it to Nineveh and was uh, telling the people to repent, and if they didn't in 40 days, the Lord would destroy their city. Well, they took him seriously, they believed him, and the king proclaimed a fast. And he said, it, it says in, in uh, that, that scripture that not only the people, but the beasts, the animals also uh, were fasting during, during this time. So it is that, that that's one of the pillars of our Lenten observances is fasting. And then we hear in our gospel, you know, the other two, the, uh, uh, let, me, let me go back to Paul's reading from our second reading. Beautiful thing Paul says today, reminding us of who we are and our lives should reflect this. He says, we are ambassadors, ambassadors of the Lord. And as such, we need to conduct ourselves in such a way to represent him, to demonstrate Christ to others through our, we have to be cheerleaders, you know, we have to really, we have to be avid fans and live in a way to entice and attract others to do likewise. Maybe they're fallen away Christians, maybe they're never have been Christians, but they should see in us some equality or qualities that are attractive and would draw others to Christ through our being ambassadors. Okay, and then in our gospel, Matthew's gospel, this is actually part of the Sermon on the Mount that Jesus is proclaiming to everyone that when we, it says, he, now this is important, okay? Three times in the gospel, first he says, when, when you give alms, he says, do it in such a way that it's secret. Don't let your left hand know what your right is doing. Don't do it for show. When you pray, pray quietly, pray privately, not so that other people can look at you and think, oh my goodness, look how holy. <laughs> okay, you're not trying to brag and show off. Now, <coughs> I just finished saying we're ambassadors of Christ. We do things that are attractive and draw people to Christ. So having a prayerful life and being somewhat public in our prayer, but it, the intent has to be not to elevate our own status in the eyes of others, but to draw others to a holy life. So we have to be careful with the balance and the intent, our hearts, where are our hearts? 
And then finally he says, when you fast, you know, wash your face, comb your hair, dress up, be, look good so that nobody can tell you're fasting. You know, and again, don't look gloomy, don't look like you're starving to death. Oh, woe is me, I'm not eating. I'm, you know, uh, that's, that's just the wrong heart set and mindset. But listen to Jesus' words in all three accounts. When you give alms, when you pray, when you fast. Didn't say if you give alms or if you pray or if you fast. Jesus expects us to do these three things. It's not a, well, if, if you get around to it ever, okay, no. These are things that are expected of us. And so we have to realize that these are not suggestions, but directives from our Lord. So during this 40 days, we do those three things. Now we should be doing those three things always, but this is an amplified time of year. This is a time of year where we really refocus, like I said, regenerate our, our faith walk and, and just kind of pump it up a little bit. And I've, I've said it in the past, and if you've been with me for any length of time, you know, I always talk about those two four-letter words in the English language. They both start with L, they both have four letters, and they both should mean the same. And those two words are Lent and life. We're on this journey, you know, and we're, we're preparing ourselves to meet our Creator. So our life's work always should be like a Lenten journey where we are focused on bettering ourselves. On Father said something this morning was really very appropriate you know we're, we're it's like this is we're under construction right now we're we're going through a demo process and rejuvenating rebuilding uh renewing ourselves through this process of lent and the holy father had something beautiful to say too with in regards to lent and it, it's so true god you know he, what we've got is is we've we've got this mindset of okay I'm going to give something up for Lent I'm going to you know okay no chocolate no sweets no uh, Facebook no you know uh, social media whatever whatever we give something up right and what happens is that leaves a vacuum or a void and the problem with leaving a void or a vacuum is that Satan likes to sneak into those empty spaces and fill them up. <clears throat> so rather than leaving them empty, fill them with something better. Fill them with something good. A great suggestion, I'll get back to the Holy Father's thing in a moment, but I heard from someone else that, and I might do this myself, uh, Psalm 51. We heard it today at Mass. This is a, a beautiful psalm from David. And it's a, a psalm where he's lamenting his sinfulness. And it's a great psalm for us to reflect on during Lent. So, you know, if you pick up Psalm 51 in Scripture and look at it every day, maybe not the whole thing every day, but maybe a, a couple lines at a time and reflect on those lines, you know, maybe read the whole thing through and then the next day, kind of just walk through it slowly and reflect on Psalm 51 um, because it's really a reminder of a penitential way of life. Okay, so just an idea. Holy Father, <laughs> I just saw this the other day or yesterday. Basically, loose translation, eat whatever you want. He says, having a steak dinner or having a big fancy meal, 
is not going to send you to hell. And conversely, having a meager, you know, slice of uh, bread and, and a piece of fish isn't going to get you to heaven. Okay, we have to focus not so much on our belly. Remember, Jesus said nothing that enters the body def defiles the body. But our focus needs to be on how we behave, how we act, how we treat other people. Opportunities for these 40 days to maybe go out of your way, do something good for someone else, visit someone who needs to be visited, the lonely, the sick, the outcast. You know, just do, fill that void, fill that emptiness of giving something up. You know, live the gospel with, with the ashes, the prayer is repent or turn away from sin and believe in the gospel. Well, we have to do more than just, we have to live the gospel. You can't just sit on the sidelines and say, yeah, I believe, I believe. You have to get out there, get your hands dirty not just your foreheads, but your hands, get out there and do things, do things for others. And uh, then you'll have the Lent that you're meant to have. So let us pray as we enter into our Lenten observances. Let us pray our evening prayer that we have a fruitful, grace-filled, productive Lenten season, all of us. In the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, amen. God, come to my assistance. Lord, make haste to help me. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever, amen. Lord, how wonderful is your wisdom, so far beyond my understanding. O Lord, you search me, and you know me. You know my resting and my rising. You discern my purpose from afar. You mark when I walk or lie down. All my ways lie open to you. Before ever a word is on my tongue, you know it, Lord. <coughs> through and through, behind and before, you besiege me. Your hand ever laid upon me, too wonderful for me this knowledge, too high beyond my reach. Oh, where can I go from your spirit? Or where can I flee from your face? If I climb the heavens, you are there. If I lie in the grave, you are there. If I take the wings of the dawn and dwell at the sea's farthest end, even there your hand would lead me. Your right hand would hold me fast. If I say, let the darkness hide me and the light around me be night, even darkness is not dark for you, and the night is as clear as the day. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Lord, how wonderful is your wisdom, so far beyond my understanding. I am the Lord. I search the mind and probe the heart. I give to each one as his deeds deserve. For it was you who created my being, knit me together in my mother's womb. I thank you for the wonder of my being, for the wonders of all your creation. Already you knew my soul, my body held no secret from you, when I was being fashioned in secret and molded in the depths of the earth. Your eyes saw all my actions, they were all of them written in your book. Every one of my days was decreed, before one of them came into being. To me, how mysterious your thoughts, the sum of them not to be numbered. If I count them, they are more than the sand. To finish, I must be eternal like you. O oh, search me, God, and know my heart. O oh, test me and know my thoughts. See that I follow not the wrong path and lead me in the path of life eternal. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. You watch over heaven and earth, Lord Jesus. Your death brought light to the dead. Your resurrection gave joy to the saints. Your ascension made the angels rejoice. Your power exceeds all power. Lead us to life eternal, 
and watch over us with your love. May your friends be filled with honor and join you in heaven. I am the Lord. I search the mind and probe the heart. I give to each one as his deeds deserve. Through him all things were made. He holds all creation together in himself. Let us give thanks to the Father for having made you worthy to share the lot of the saints in light. He rescued us from the power of darkness and brought us into the kingdom of his beloved Son. Through him we have redemption, the forgiveness of our sins. He is the image of the invisible God, the firstborn of all creatures. In him everything in heaven and on earth was created, things visible and invisible. All were created through him, all were created for him. He is before all else that is. In him everything continues in being. It is he who is head of the body, the church, he who is the beginning, the firstborn of the dead, so that primacy may be his in everything. It pleased God to make absolute fullness reside in him, and by means of him to reconcile everything in his person, both on earth and in the heavens, making peace through the blood of his cross. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Through him all things were made. He holds all creation together in himself. A reading from St. Paul's letter to the Philippians. Work with anxious concern to achieve your salvation. It is God who, in his good will towards you, begets in you any measure of desire or achievement. In everything you do, act without grumbling or arguing. Prove yourselves innocent and straightforward, children of God without reproach. To you, O Lord, I make my prayer for mercy. To you, O Lord, I make my prayer for mercy. Heal my soul, for I have sinned against you. I make my prayer for mercy. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit. To you, O Lord, I make my prayer for mercy. When you give alms, do not let your left hand know what your right hand is doing. My soul proclaims the greatness of the Lord. My spirit rejoices in God, my Savior, for he has looked with favor on his lowly servant. From this day all generations will call me blessed. The Almighty has done great things for me, and holy is his name. He has mercy on those who fear him in every generation. He has shown the strength of his arm. He has scattered the proud in their conceit. He has cast down the mighty from their thrones. He has lifted up the lowly. He has filled the hungry with good things and the rich. He has sent away empty. He has come to the help of his servant Israel. For he has remembered his promise of mercy. Promise he made to our fathers, to Abraham and his children forever. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. When you give alms, do not let your left hand know what your right hand is doing. All glory and honor to God, for in the blood of Christ he has ratified a new and everlasting covenant with his people, and renews it in the sacrament of the altar. Let us lift our voices in prayer. Bless your people, Lord. Lord, guide the minds and hearts of peoples and all in public office so that they seek the common good. Bless your people, Lord. Renew the spirit of dedication in those who have left all to follow Christ. May they give clear witness to the holiness of the church. Bless your people, Lord. You have made all men and women in your image. May they always uphold human dignity. Bless your people, Lord. Lead back to your friendship and truth all who have gone astray. Teach us how to help them. Bless your people, Lord. Grant that the dead may enter into your glory. 
to praise you forever. Bless your people, Lord. Remember us, Lord, when you come to your kingdom and teach us how to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Amen. Lord, protect us in our struggle against evil. As we begin the discipline of Lent, make this day holy by our self-denial. Grant this through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. Amen. May the Lord bless us, protect us from all evil, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. And may Almighty God bless you all, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Great night, everyone. And remember... Uh, Psalm 51, great spiritual reading for Lent. And as I mentioned over the last couple of days, we just got away from it, but James, the letter of James, five chapters, great book, a great letter, uh, great life lessons there. So fill, fill, fill the voids of giving things up with things better, like reading scripture. God bless you all. See you tomorrow.